Having completed the static rigging and rigged both engines to be physically the same, it is now time to see how they are matched when we run them in the engine run bay. When performing the running checks, it is preferable to have two people in the cockpit. The aircraft maintenance manual must be referenced for the settings required and these should be written on an engine run sheet. With both engines running, propeller levers at the maximum stop and the condition levers at the low idle position, slowly advance one power lever at a time and mark on the tape the point the compressor speed just begins to increase. Reduce the power lever to idle and again mark the tape. This gives you the forward dead band position. Operationally, we want to rig twin engine aircraft based on matching engine torques and having no split in the power lever knobs. Therefore, we need to adjust the rigging to provide the compressor speeds that give us matched torques. Select four or five target torque values that cover the power range for the aircraft. These become the points that we check the knob split. Increase the power on both engines together, mark the position of the power levers at each of the target torque values. As you see here, there is about half a knob split at the higher torques. Let's take a close look at the type of knob splits possible. The progressive stagger. In this indication, we've got both engines at 1,000 pounds and the power lever is showing a, a minor stagger at this point. As we increase in engine power, the stagger becomes progressive, much more pronounced. To correct a progressive knob split, the fine adjustment of the serrated washer is used. In this example, we've got the constant stagger. Again, we've got the engines running, 1,000 pound, we've got a constant power lever stagger. As we advance engine power with matching torques on both engines, the power lever is a constant stagger between the levers. To correct a constant split, lengthen or shorten the interconnect rod. This is our interconnect rod down to the fuel control. Yeah. There's a little serrated washer, it's hard to see, but... Sometimes we have a combination of progressive and constant power lever knob split. We recommend addressing the progressive split first, which makes eliminating the constant split much easier. For our aircraft, we have a progressive right-hand power lever knob lag. You're pretty well behind the engine, the 42. Yeah. After making adjustments, the test is then repeated. The tape is again marked as torque is increased to check the change in response. In this case, we can see the knob split we originally saw has now been eliminated. If this is not the case, we, can, we would then make further adjustments as indicated by the tape. Remember that for all running checks, the serrated washer adjustment is always the fine adjustment and never the coarse adjustment. With the power lever set at the low idle gate, mark the tape and slowly move the power lever toward reverse. Note the point at which compressor speed just begins to increase and mark the tape again. This gives you the reverse dead band. Continue moving the power levers to the maximum reverse position and confirm that the compressor speeds are per the aircraft maintenance manual requirement. We would also recommend that the torques are closely matched. Take your time to match both engines together Maximum reverse compressor speed may be adjusted by turning the reverse pickup screw clockwise to increase compressor speed or counterclockwise to decrease compressor speed. Here we are checking the low idle speed setting. Low idle is defined differently between three and four, four blade propellers. Please refer to the applicable aircraft maintenance manual for the specific requirements. If the idle speed requires adjusting, carefully loosen the lock nut securing the adjuster, hold the spanner steady as the screw is adjusted. 
We would recommend holding the adjusting screw with the Allen key, otherwise it will turn as you tighten the lock nut and that will change the idle speed setting. Here we are increasing the compressor speed to high idle. With the condition lever at high idle, the compressor speed should be verified that they meet the aircraft maintenance manual requirements. Here is how to adjust the setting. If the high idle speed requires to be adjusted, turn the nut clockwise to increase the compressor speed and counterclockwise to decrease compressor speed. Slightly advance the power lever to 94% compressor speed. With your opposite hand, place the thumb directly in front of the power lever to act as a stop. Keeping the thumb in place, move the power lever back to idle. Move the power lever reasonably quickly back to your thumb. The reason for doing this is to achieve the required compressor speed for the acceleration check without exceeding any engine limits and also allows you to gauge the aircraft behaviour during the engine rapid acceleration. Repeat this process a few times to become comfortable each time speeding up the process. For the actual acceleration check, move the power lever within one second to your thumb. Time the engine response to reach 94% compressor speed. It should be within two to four seconds with no compressor stall. To adjust the engine acceleration, carefully cut the lock wire holding the dome in place. Be careful not to cut the lock wire with the seal securing the nut and the shaft. To slow down the acceleration or eliminate compressor stall, you can index the dome up to three clicks from the index line, counterclockwise. To increase the acceleration rate, or to match to the opposite engine on the aircraft, the dome may be indexed up to three clicks clockwise from the index mark. For PT6 engines equipped with a Honeywell fuel control unit, the maximum compressor speed is 101.6%. This setting can be adjusted on the fuel control unit to check this setting, the part power trim stop is deployed, run the engine, advance the power lever to the maximum position and record the compressor speed. This is 97.1% compressor speed. To adjust this setting, there is a maximum compressor speed adjustment screw on the fuel control unit power lever arm. Adjust out to increase the compressor speed and adjust in to decrease the compressor speed. Following the part power trim check, the stop must be stowed after use. With the part power trim stop now stowed, the maximum compressor speed will be 101.6%. With both propeller levers at the maximum position, increase the power levers until the propeller speed no longer increases. Note the values obtained and make adjustments if required to obtain the value defined in the aircraft maintenance manual. With the defined values now shown on the gauge, run both engines together at maximum propeller speed and check both values match. More importantly, we would recommend listen to the propellers and confirm that they sound synchronised. If the propeller maximum speeds are not exactly the same, with the propeller synchroniser disengaged, an annoying out of sync condition will be evident. For enhanced passenger comfort, this should be eliminated by adjusting the maximum speed stop on one of the governors. To check this setting, secure the propeller governor reset arm on the reset rear stop. Run the engine, set the propeller levers to maximum, advance the power levers and confirm the propeller speed is 95% of maximum selected. For this engine, the maximum propeller speed is 2000 RPM, so the propeller speed we are looking for here is nominally 1900 RPM. To adjust, the maximum propeller speed in reverse adjustment has a reference mark on the lock plate and a dimple on the adjustment screw. Loosen the screws on the lock plate, turn the adjustment screw. Turning the dimple toward the reference mark increases the propeller RPM and turning the dimple away from the reference mark decreases the propeller RPM. One blade width is approximately 50 RPM. Run the engine, advance the power lever to the required propeller RPM and confirm the torque value corresponds to the value per the aircraft maintenance manual. It is important that for a twin engine aircraft both the engines are the same value. Some aircraft manufacturers require the beta arm position to be adjusted 
and some may permit beta nuts in the propeller to be adjusted to make flight idle blade angle adjustments. By paying careful attention to the static rigging and understanding the basic adjustments as detailed here, during the running checks, both engines can be matched together. It will take some practice for you to discover your own personal shortcuts, but by applying the basic aircraft maintenance manual procedures and the workflow shown here, rigging engines will no longer be an issue.